hello it's Sarah and I've been painting composition books so this is something that I've been doing ever since I started um, on YouTube just these uh, composition books that you get you can get them at the dollar store or whatever this one has like washi tape and jelly prints Prima paper I even did one with um, polymer clay tiles and then I use that to take notes so it's my personal notebook this one is the one I did for um, life book 2016 but I'm just enjoying this design this enchanted forest that I uh, did on mine and I did another one and I worked out some kinks like I didn't love the colors the way the colors I changed the blue I love the back the back really turned out cute so I had shown this in a previous video and then I did the back so I thought I would do one with you guys um, this is actually I got this at Acme a grocery store they're like $1.99 at the grocery store but it's got the stitched binding so it's a pretty stable little notebook you know um, and you can cover all this with paper you know um, I my very first one I did I put pockets in it like I just glued pages together and made pockets to store things in I mean you can do a million and one things to it but um, I haven't actually seen someone paint it before so we're gonna paint and you need to prep always need to prep your surface because uh, paper is a porous surface meaning when you put paint on it it will suck into it and this happens to have a coating on that of some type so um, I just want to uh, oops <laughs> cover that and I'm using white gesso this is a uh, basics acrylic gesso acrylic gesso I'm going to use my palette knife and just spread that on try to I don't know if I have enough out at the moment but I'm just going to give this a coating let me put a little bit more and then we're going to put some um, oops uh, a little bit of texture on here because what I've learned about mixed media and I'm so excited you guys to know this now to understand I like to know why I do things not just do it um, anywho this all peeks through it's all part of the design and I've now um, decided I just do my own painting style on here but the backgrounds are still super cool and what I've learned from taking classes is you can add little messages in here the journaling part of the art journal is what I didn't get because I never I don't usually add my emotions into it I don't put um, you know that sort of thing and I'm still not really doing that but it's okay if you want to so look what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna take this is like a foam stamp I've shown these before this is kids foam and then a piece of sticky back kids foam that I cut a swirl into and I'm just gonna push that down on that gesso and it kind of makes like a, a dendritic that's what cat hand calls it I'll show you in a minute after we dry it and I just put a couple on there maybe four all right not a big not don't this is again this is also you don't think about it you just get what you get and you don't get upset that's what another uh, class I took at uh, life book said it was so cute she was working with her little daughter I think her name was Tallulah oh my god so cute I'm gonna put some of these flowers now these are just cheesy stamps that I don't care about I don't want to use my best stamps for this you know because gesso is a, a sticky um, stiffener it's a stiffener it has tooth to it so you don't want to put your um, best stamps into the gesso and your brushes that's why I kind of use the um, let's do I love plastic canvas this one's getting kind of goopy but I love the uh, cross hatching marks that it leaves so I just push that down in a few places and you guys might not be able to see this at all but watch when we start adding paint you're gonna see it so I'm gonna go away and dry that now if you're doing a composition book you'd want to do this to both sides and I've actually done 
separately. I just do, I finish one side and then I come back and totally do the other side. So it's up to you. I just didn't want to have my book like this the whole time. <clears throat> but those, I will, that I will leave up to you. I'm going to dry this and I'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I did the, the back while I was at it just because I don't want to have to mess with gesso again. Don't have to deal with that. One less supply on my desk when I go to do the back. Um, and the next step I'm going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of, now, here, one other thing. I did use my heat gun and look, I got a little bit of warpage to my pages. So if, if that's an issue, just, you know, go lightly or let it dry naturally. You don't have to use your heat gun. If you do use your heat gun and you hold it close to the gesso, you may get a little bit of extra bubblage, um, blistering, but... <clears throat> You can also warp your page. So see this, if you're working on a canvas, it's not, not, a, not an issue. But on a paper, on a book like this, you can warp it. So just be careful um, and just know, note, note to self, that can happen. Um, now the next thing we're gonna do is add black. And this is cool. This is um, something I learned um, in a class. Jody Ole did this for, uh, her the second class I took with her and what I liked about it was I like adding black into my composition and on some of the other ones like past I love pastels I love all color I mean I don't hate <laughs> any color but I like adding black it just it appeals to me so I kind of wanted to try that and that's the technique I've been using on these notebooks and also because it's black already there is black showing through this way we'll cover up the because we're covering something I mean anyway it, it's so I'm just taking a brush I haven't added water or anything and I'm just gonna add black and I'm kinda it can be thick and oops hold on I wanna put a piece of paper under because I am a mess just to protect the rest of your book um, and just drag it across you wanna cut you're gonna cover the book but you don't want it opaque because we do want some of that white to show through too to add bright spots. So this gives you bright spots and dark spots. And with mixed media or this type of painting, I always, I couldn't understand why are you doing that? So we look at now you can see if I go in, you can see the dendritic design showing through. Some of the stamping that I did is showing through. Here's a swirl. And really it's just for the fun of it I like that idea it might there are other reasons obviously it gives depth and interest and all these other painterly notions um, but you know what I think it's fun and I always go with the fun part for me if something isn't fun I don't really see the point of it like there's red showing through there that's from the notebook that's kind of cool covering it up um, but you can see all that kind of texture now I'm gonna put a little bit more I don't want that much white showing but I definitely want white showing and you can go any direction you could write with a smaller brush just like make all kinds of things and then you can even do a you could spatter on here you could do whatever because this is your background this isn't what you're going to see when you look at the piece. This is just going to sneak through. Oh, that's my birdie. Kiwi! What's the matter? I'm going to do a little... I think that's good. I'm going to stop. Now, here's the thing. The next step we're going to do is add the color. And before we add that, I want you to pick some colors. Choose colors that you like make you happy. <clears throat> I'm going to set that aside. You know what? I don't even want to put this in my water. I have clean water. I'm just going to wrap it in a wet. Um, I'm going to set this aside and grab a piece of paper. Um, let me see. I think my hubby just... No, it wasn't hubby. Um, I'm going to... Okay, so we'll talk about the design. Now, this design is called like 
an enchanted forest or something, right? <clears throat> Let me get two pieces of paper. Because basically what you want to do, so this is the front of my book and this is going to be the back of my book. So I'm just going to go like this. So now my book is open. And what I decided to do is kind of connect the hills to make it so when the book, I don't know, because you're not going to see the front and the back of the book at the same time. <clears throat> but um, what, I, what I liked about this design is there's things in the forefront that are closer to you, and then there's things that are more in the background. So the, the, one of the main um, uh, elements of the design is, are these clouds. And I just make them real simple like that. A real, oh, I'm not even in the shot. Let me go back out. Sorry. Okay. And there's a couple, you can make clouds like this too. Just a straight line. I mean, look at your stamps. You have cloud stamps or cloud punches and things. I mean, anything goes. But that is one of the main design elements because we're going to have hearts hanging from them. The other thing I have are these cool bushes and trees and a house. The house is obviously the focal point and I'm gonna tweak things on this one I think because for two reasons. My houses um, weren't pulling, the, okay look, I'm just trying to show you. The first one I did was great. I think everything looks cohesive, the colors are good, it's pinks and grays and blues and it's good. Um, on the other side, I decided to change my gray color to a different, it's like more of a tan. Um, and I still like it. It's, it's okay. But on my second one, this one, and I changed my blue, I changed a few things, and I set my house further back. So now everything has to be kind of close because if my house is the biggest thing, I can't put a huge, I mean, I probably could have put a huge tree here, but that's what I did on the back. So on the back, oops, hold on. The tree is the furthest toward us. It's the closest thing. And then these are to they're, um, toadstools. So it's very, it's kind of out of perspective. It's not, because they would be much smaller than a tree, and they're even behind the tree. So it's still, but it's something that I want you to consider when you're putting your items down on the page, that they just kind of seem like cohesive and in proportion. So this one makes a little more sense because the mushrooms are actually the furthest, or I keep saying furthest, but they're the closest toward us. And then the tree is the next thing, and that's the biggest. And then these are supposedly further in the distance. So do you see what I'm saying? It just creates a kind of like a this one, this one looks fine. This is, the house is the closest. The trees are a bit closer. You know, they're further, but they're closer. And these are the furthest trees. And I do the same thing with the flowers. The biggest flowers are closest to you. And then they get smaller as they go. Okay, do you see? So that's kind of what I want you to consider when you're creating your design. Now, the other thing is the hills. And I just go for. I just go free form. I don't really worry about it. But this ended up being like this. I did the front first. Oh my god, my bird is freaking out. I'm going to go get her. Sorry, she never does that unless, I don't know, I think she's calling me. So I just, she's on my shoulder. She's chilling. Um, so anyway, I did this first and then I added these hills. So it's not, it wasn't a whole picture first. I added this after this. So I just connected this line and then create and like I followed through with this one and that's kind of how it turned out let's see how the other one looks I don't know this one's kind of cool it has one main hill a little front hill here and these are just kind of on their own little I just like to set them down on something. So, and that's just winging it. I didn't plan it out, but you can absolutely plan it out. If you, you know, just like I, I did here, I just got a couple pieces of paper and think about where you want your main um, design to go. Um, I wanna put a big tree in the forefront on this one. 
And by big, you know, I mean proportionate to what we have going here. <clears throat> I don't want it to go too far up into the clouds, so that's pretty big for this, <clears throat> this size thing. Then I want my house to kind of be in the front here. And I like to do this kind of peaked house with a kind of that. And then it can be wonky. It can be shaped whatever shape you want. This could be a mushroom. I'm putting my mushroom on the back. Don't know why. Um, <clears throat> and you could, it could be, hmm. I think I want to put a hill here. I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm doing, guys. This is just off the cuff. So it's sitting on a hill this time. And then I'm going to put a hill behind, too. And I'm going to have, I want to have these flowers that are going to be like I did on my other one. They're a little closer. I don't know. I'm changing it up. I like to do a like a circular door. I really don't know why. And I put these cobblestone-y things around it. And then I'm going to do my... And the cool thing about these is the bigger they... Further away from you, they get bigger. And it looks like, you know, you get dimension. Um, you could put a window in the house. I've been putting this little chimney here. And maybe I'll put... Do I want to put a small window? I'm going to put a small window. Uh, and I could, this could end up wider on my piece or whatever. Then I have to put a few little trees in the background. So these are further away and behind the house, which is just filling in that area. Um, I think a flower down here, and definitely a bigger one, because this is the furthest close. The cl see, I keep saying furthest, but I mean the closest to us. So that one should be bigger than those. And you could put even smaller ones back in the distance. You know, like they're kind of just out in the field. And that's that's looking good. I kind of like that design. And then for your back, when you go to do that, you're going to continue any paths, any any hills, right? And then. I had um, the toadstools, which I love making these things. Now let me think. Um, I'm going to make them the furthest. I keep saying furthest, and I mean closest. So I'm going to make a little hill here. And for the toadstools, I like to make a fat one for the one with that with the door. He's fat, and he, and you can make his the top any shape you want. And there's stamps of these or pictures. And I put this little kind of, I don't know, underneath thing that would be dark, you know. And I put polka dots on it or just try to make it really whimsical. And I've been doing the the path the same way as I did for the big house. And then you could make a tall one. So this one's just going to be like, I think I have toadstools on a stamp. Hold on. Let me see. No, I thought I had, um, I don't, uh, I thought I had the Diane Reevely one. I like her toadstools though. So like, I don't like the, I should have made this kind of curve because you can make it, because it's taller, you can make it curve like that. And you could even add like a really short one over here, but I like to add flowers again. And these are going to be your biggest ones because you're closest toward us so maybe put a couple of bigger flowers because you're in the forefront right and then I think we could add another don't forget about your clouds and they can kind of hang off the edge of your book too you could do a flat one you don't have to have them all the same and that looks terrible I would I wouldn't keep that I like them to lurk, look a certain way um, but I think I'm gonna put a couple big like another big tree kind of right here and by big it's not big it's just got a full trunk like that and then there's going to be smaller ones behind on the horizon line you can even add another hill if you wanted to 
there's another hill going up here so you could put even smaller trees because they're further away you see what I'm saying so then there's this hill and you could still put I just like it because I'm gonna have shading in there and you could have a tree on here too I mean uh, um, another couple trees going that way I like that I think I'm gonna do that and then <clears throat> Don't forget, like just you could just put a big flower, your biggest flower right here. All right, so see that? So now we've kind of gotten this village thing going on or something, you know? Um, and that, I just winged it. But now, the other thing is, I hang these little hearts from the clouds. And they are actually just kind of, and like one could be just right in the tree. Um, they're just hanging random you can put them all over the place it could be a, a long one down here so now and that's what i add a little bit of pink up there now for color composition um i have a go-to palette i just like these colors they're bright and i'm running out i have no more turquoise i'm going to use this today the turquoise blue this is actually the americana brand um but it's, it's a very, it's a pretty, it's light, I can't explain it. Because I tried to switch it out and use a different, this is the difference. This is with the turquoise. And this is just a version, a different, it's thallo, I think, no not thallo, what was it called? Azure blue. And it just didn't appeal to me the same way. I don't know. It's still pretty. I mean, you can see it's just darker. It's not, anyway. So pick the, your favorite colors because this is a fantasy piece. It's a whimsical piece. And I just want the colors to match that feeling. And of course, right now I'm into bubblegum pink. It's a very pink pink. I've been using, this is called Hansa Yellow. I think I'm going to switch it up today and go with Cad Yellow. I just want to see the difference because I've been having trouble with this turning green on me. It's a lot lighter yellow. This is a more mustardy looking, you know. Um, and then the green. I like this bright green because I can uh, use my black green. So these are my four colors that I've been going to. And then there's purples. And I, purple is an interesting color because as we know, you can make mud when you use purple. So I've just been using the pink instead. And pink and blue make purple. So if I get a happy accident with that, it's good. Um, and then for the trees, I've been using my, my burnt sienna, it's burnt umber, burnt sienna, it's like a reddish brown. So I start with that um, for my tree trunks, my wooden door, if I have a wooden door. And then I am going to use the lichen gray. This is a gray, but it's kind of like a tan gray for my mushrooms and my bricks and stuff like that. I'm gonna stick with that. I've been going, I was using a darker gray, but I like this one better. So that's basically, of course, white. You need your white for, where is it? Uh, right here, for my clouds. And this is just a regular white. And then you're gonna need black. So these are the colors that I'm gonna to use to, to base in all these elements. I'm gonna paint them in not solid and this is the great thing too about mixed media um let me get my book what happens is when i use a sheer coat look what happens the white stamping that i did behind and we're going to do that next i'm going to show you how we're going to put our background color on here and it's basically building a background i did a video on that <clears throat> already but I want to show you how I do it with this one because I do keep my colors separate I'll show you um, you can see the texture coming through my cross hatching on the bottom there's a there's a flower stamp right there a white the whites popping through here's some of the swirl design and when I used to paint before like when I painted a regular um, uh, what is this called decorative painting project you painted everything in opaque. It was all a solid color. Then you added your shading, highlight, and details. And it's fine. I love it. But this is, it's just fun. And like the blue is totally showing through on this pink. 
totally because I did it so sheer. But for some reason, it just gives it something. I couldn't do that on purpose, you know, and so that's the thing. That's what I'm loving about it. Um, all right, so just be, just relax and let whatever happens happen. Obviously, this one is my favorite. This one I didn't like as much. Um, you know what else? I have to spray this with a fixative because this is, so you can tell the dullness. This has a sheen to it and it feels finished. And this is not, I haven't sprayed this to um, seal it. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so let it, it is what it is. You get what you get and you don't get upset. That was what Tallulah said. All right. So get your design, sketch out something that you like, somewhere to go. So you know, you don't have to look at your page and be like, oh God, what do I do now? I don't want to mess it up. So now I know where I'm going, all right? So I'm going to set that aside and we're going to pull back in our piece. Now let me make sure I'm in the front and the back. All right, this is the front. And I'm going to use this as my guide <clears throat> because I want green here. I want green about halfway blue up top all right <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I have a frog the other thing <coughs> that I've learned <coughs> from taking classes is what is the point of all these mediums <coughs> well Water has been my go-to medium for years. I just use water to make my paint transparent or inky or whatever. But glazing medium is my new favorite thing. I'm using this now to make my paint transparent. And it also adds a sheen to the background so that when I go on top of it with something, it doesn't just sit right, it seals the surface too. It, it'll create a barrier so that the next layer doesn't just go right through, which water doesn't ha do that. So that's what I'm learning a lot more about with mixed media is what these mediums do. Um, I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention or what, but I'm just gonna put some green and some blue out on, I use a paper towel, I'm just using a paper plate, I mean. Uh, and, glazing medium. I'm running out. I have to get more of that. I'm going to use this big brush. This is about a one inch and it's a cheapy brush. It's not, it says Royal Clear Choice. So it might not be that cheap. I probably had it in my stash for a while. And I did just wet the bristles. Probably more out of habit. Yeah, I think it was because I want to dress the brush in the glazing medium. So I have a lot of glazing medium. I'm going to go with blue first. And now I'm just basically I'm brush mixing it because you could make a puddle of both and mix, but I just brush mix. And when you go to your piece, gently, don't, we're not trying to opaque this. We want some of this to show through. And we're going to put a few colors on here. Oh, am I zoomed in again? Oh, boy. Um, so just start adding. I just love this color. Oh, my gosh. It's so pretty. Get it down on the um, binding, too. And I'm basically just adding a little bit of that for now. This is the first little step. I want more though. I want this to definitely be And I'm put, putting a little more pressure. I'm going to come around and make sure I'm on the spine. I didn't get very much black on the spine, did I? All right, leave it. I'm going to go um, just rinse my brush. You really use a baby wipe, just pull the paint off and do the same thing with the green. Actually, I should have done the green first because I like to pull a little bit of the blue into the green, but I don't like to put the green in the blue. But it's okay if I put the blue in the green. 
Look how beautiful that green is. I just love it. This is called um, Olive Green, and it's a Americana, yeah, Americana brand. And you can see all that texture, all the circles, and the it's just cool. Look, if you don't like it, if you're a neat, neat, neat painter, you might not like it. You know, so if it's not your cup of tea, don't do all that stuff and just paint a neat background, like paint it all one color and make yourself happy. Don't do it if you don't like it. Now watch, I'm just going to go into the blue and show you how it turns it teal. It changes some of the color on the bottom though. I won't put this in the sky, but I do love it on the grass. I'm adding just a little more blue. And it gives it depth, like it looks far and close and I can't explain it. It's just awesome. I love it. All right, so look how pretty already, I think. All right, I'm gonna pull that green back off of there. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of pink, just you know, in the sky especially, I love when the horizon, you know, the sun and the clouds make that pinkish hue in the sky, that reflective color. Um, so I'm just going to do it and see what happens. And again, gel medium on my brush, a little bit of pink, brush mix in there, and a light touch. I'm just going to hit it here and there. Look at that, I totally got a crosshatch pattern right there. Like I don't love that I hit, oh look, there I got green. But look, I am gonna go down into the grass because maybe there's some flowers down there, some pink weeds. In my garden, I have pink weeds, the pretty kind. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that. And now you can make mud so for the yellow, I want to add yellow, but I think I'm going to dry it. I'm going to dry it. I'll be right back. So you know what I decided to do? I'm going to spatter with yellow because this way I'm going to find my good spatter brush right here. I like to use this stiff, it's a um, Shui Fan. I've had it forever. It's a zero fan brush, but it doesn't have the synthetic bristles. It's more of those like bristly bristles but I love it for spatter. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the yellow on my palette and just take, dip it in water. This is how I do it. I'm not a spatter expert. And just rub it. This is pretty wet. I think I'm gonna blot. I don't want it that wet. And then, <clears throat> you can kind of make bigger spats and smaller ones depending on how much water you have. And how much paint because they'll be more opaque the more paint you have and these are tiny little spatters I think I want to do a little bit more um, wetter uh oh it got green I went into the blue and I totally could tell that it, w it turned green on me and I don't want green not that it would be horrible but I want it I want yellow so I'm gonna you know do it again <clears throat> and just pick up now this should be this is thicker so we'll see what we get oh yeah much bigger they seem um, a little more watery too so they might not dry as opaque and that's enough but you know what it does it makes I don't know. And this is just going to shine through when I, because I'm, this isn't the end piece yet. All right. I'm just sorry. I get, I'm very excited, you guys. Isn't this ridiculous? Why do I get so excited about spatter? All right. I'll be right back. All right. I'm going to do a little bit of stamping on here. Now you can also build your background stenciling, stamping, uh, Anything, anything that you want to do to the background um, to enhance it, 
I consider it enhancing. You might not. You might think you're messing it up. But I'm going to take some of this blue, and I like to make a little, um, like a stamp pad over here. And it's messy. A lot of people just paint onto their stamp. Like, I'm going to use, let me see, I want to use this little one. My, my desk just gets destroyed. I can't find anything. Oh, here it is. I uh, carved this. And it's just a smaller version of this one, but I'm going to use that in the sky right now. I'm just try to put out a little bit of blue, a little bit, a little bit of water, and I just rub it onto my craft mat, and I stamp into it like it's stamp pad, right? And I'm going to go in my sky. Here and there, just to bring back that bright blue color, right? So that's a lot, but I love it. Can you see? Oh yeah, you can see it on camera really good. You know what? Let's do a few um, circles, like if this is going to do it. Circles with my cap. Love it. So now we're just bringing that bright, bright blue color back, right? Cause it got it got dulled down. There's there was hardly any. It was pink and black. And uh, I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna put a few in the on the green. I'm running out of paint. And I wanna do I wanna do white in the sky too. Cause I'm gonna have clouds. Um, let me see. If, I'm just gonna use up this paint and see. I'm just using it up. All right, good enough. Um, gonna do the same thing. The grass looks really good though. I think I just want to work on my sky, but uh, I need white. I definitely and black. Let's add a little black. Just a little, cause we do. I mean, you can still see black shining through. But I like to add it with, um, and that's kind of wet. I really did use a lot of water. Um, I get so excited. This uh, plastic canvas shape, I just like it. It's like a cross hatchy mark. I like a lot. I don't know why. It's looking really black right now, but it'll calm down. Trust me. You got to trust me. I'm, I know what I'm doing finally. Uh, so that's enough black, and then I want to add white. I definitely got to add some white. And listen, you, you can take your time. Because I'm filming, I'm trying to move it along because I don't want to take hours to do this. But you can take hours. Take your time. Feel it. Have fun. Um, because you can make mud. If you keep putting paint on top of paint, it's, it's just going to... What? Come here. This, she's going to take a dump on my page again. Kiwi, look up here. Look. Look at mommy's finger. Hello. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I hear you talking. Uh, white, right? Let's put a little bit of white. And I don't want this to be really opaque, so I am going to water it down. And I'm going to use that big stamp again, this one. That's it. I think that's it. That's all. That's all I need. Um, do I want to be done? I want to put some pink flowers on the in the grass. Yep, I do. I do. This one. These little pink flowers, I want to put that in the grass. So this is all kind of whatever floats your Bodhi stuff. You don't have to, you know, this again, it's more a, of a background. It's nothing that's going to be prominent in your in your composition. It's just for fun and your own amusement. 
I like this little flower one. Let's see. Pop a few of them here and there. And it's nice and watery, so they might dry kind of opaque. Some will dry opaque. I'm going to put a few in the sky. What the hell? Because I love it. Okay, that's enough. I'm getting a little crazy. Now, guess what? We're going to add our design. I'm going to go off camera because you can't really see it. It's pencil. Um, I use, I like to use the, uh, let's see. It's called the Derwent. Uh, this one. No, hold on. These are my, my pencil y things. It has a blue end on it. Where? Oh, it's probably on my desk. Hello, right here. It is on my desk. This one. This is the medium wash, and I think it comes in dark, medium, and light. And they didn't have the light, so I have the medium wash brush. Derwent Sketching. And it has this little paintbrush icon on there and the blue stripe. But I got this at Michael's, and it's in their little pencil place. And there's different um, graphite pencils in there, so just make sure it says wash. And up at the top, it gives you a guide what to look for. You really have to make sure this is dry before you go onto it because you can scratch it off with the I have a sharp point um, but it, after it's dry you should be good to go and the reason I like this is because it dissolves with water so if you mess up you just take take a, a baby wipe and and wipe it off if you don't like your lines but I'm gonna um, put my design on there and the thing is you can't really see it so maybe I should I think I'm gonna base coat a few things so that you can see the design a little better and I'll do a couple things on camera so you can see how I paint them but um, that way we'll um, we will not take up too much time too alright I'll be right back okay I'm pretty happy with how it went on to the piece the design because you know it's not exactly like my initial drawing but it's it's close and I just wanted to show you I'm gonna do the clouds real quick but just that you keep them super sheer really try to keep them super sheer because that's the fun part when all the stuff shows through from the background so that's what you want to keep you know or if you don't like that then do it opaque but I am putting gel medium on my brush and then I'm going into the white paint just a little bit and even if it's too much I can still blot it out now I know you can't see these clouds I'll come in a little, but just, well, you can see them okay. I can see them. Um, I always start in the middle, and this is looking a little opaque, so I may blot some out with a paper towel after I paint it. And I use the, I let the brush do the talk in here. See how I'm just sliding around the edge with the chisel of my brush? And that's it. It's it's as simple as that. And it's kind of cool that the um, the graphite is water soluble so when I touch it with the paint it kind of dissolves and almost gives it a shaded effect too which is fine. Now this is not totally sheer. I kind of like it though. But look you could just take if you don't if it's a little too opaque like that got green for some reason. I think I had green on my brush and this is like a, it's a baby wipe, it's kind of wet, but see now some of the blue is shining through, the pink. I'm going to add some um, color into the cloud at the end anyway. We're going to add pink and um, I have one up here, let's see if you can, I don't know how good, see I can hardly see it because of the angle, let's see right here. Oh this is looking green. You know what, the green from on my palette I had green it's kind of I'm going to I'm going to blend a new section over here because it's it is kind of looking green. I want it white. So I'm going to let's take that off. And just go uh yeah, that's white. Now that's white. See? Just let the brush 
do the work. That one looks so much whiter than that one. Look, that one kind of looks green. That's funny. I'm going to blot it a little bit. Just a little bit so some of the stuff shines through. And then I have this other little section here. Uh, just peeking from the edge of the book. And now I can hang hearts everywhere. I can hang hearts all over the place because there's kind of clouds on the whole um, horizon line there. Alright, so that's my clouds. I like them. That one's definitely greenish. I'm going to go over it a little bit more with... Oh, that's the green. I went right into the green spot again. Where's the... Here it is. I don't want to brighten it up. I think I did. All right. And that's, so that's the idea that I'm coming into this with. So even though you can see, it's really, really sheer. When I shade it, it's going to look so awesome. All right. The last little thing I want to do is my stepping stones. And they are kind of just coming straight down the front. And I'm going to do the same thing. Um, here's Lichen Gray. I'm going to put a bunch of gel medium on my brush and kind of put it down over here and then pull a little bit of paint into that and mix it around and then go to my piece. And I should have enough paint on here to totally, and I'm just tipping the book so I can see, to totally do all these stepping stones. And you know what guys, it's so sheer, I don't even know that you're going to be able to see it. I'm um, going to try to get a little more paint on my brush so you can see it. There we go. But when we do the shading and add a little bit of color and metallic paint, oops, one out of lines. But see how I'm gradually getting bigger and bigger and thicker? The closer to me that they get, I make them a little bigger so that they, it's kind of looking like an illusion of they're coming toward us. And that's it. They're so um, sheer right now. That's the thing. That's also what I'm loving because I would have to do two and three coats on some things to get it opaque before when I was doing decorative painting. So this is the quick, easy, and I have no patience. So this is my new way to go. I love it. Okay. And then for the, um, around the door, I did the same, I'm going to do the same color. And I'm just using a round brush, a smaller brush, and I can get in here and um, just pull this color up here. And all the details will come later. But I just want to get a background of that color in there. And it's also pulling the graphite, so it's getting shaded and cool because rocks and stones have all that um, kind of... Uh, what is it called? Like I want to say all that's coming to my mind is granulations. And it's not what I'm trying to say. But striations, maybe that's the word, like of different colors of rock, right? So it's all goodness. It's all happy accident stuff. So I know it doesn't look opaque right now. And you can see that circle of white totally shining through. But the next part is my favorite part. Oh, wait a minute. I think I want to put... I could put another flower here, but we can always add that. Um, I'm going to start doing shading next. And for those of you who are used to using your um, pit pens, you can use pit pens to do this. This is just a leaf. Um, there's a leaf. Where's my leaves over here? Um, I'll put it over here and over here. Um, for those of you, like I said, who are used to using um, your pit pens to shade, I'm just going to put a window in the roof. And I'm making it white because the yellow will be more opaque. I like the, well, anyway, just on top of white, it'll look good. And plus, I'll leave a little bit of the outline of the white to, like, make a, um... Because really, I was just thinking about that. There's not a lot of white pulled down. So I think I'm going to do a white scallop on the roof. Like, I'm going to make that white 
And maybe, I'll, I don't know, add a little bit of white flowers. I could do that. I'm going to do the centers of my flowers with yellow. I think I'm... There's not going to be a lot of yellow in the piece either. Even though it's in the background, I need it for my window and a few things. So I just decide to pop that into the centers of the flowers. Very messy. Not neat at all. And I still think, you know, you can't see it completely yet. But wait until we start the shade. So should I just go ahead and start the shade right now? You know what, I think I'm just going to, while I have the other colors, the way I do my shading, and you can do it with a, an angle brush, which is my preference, or you can use a, um, even a flat brush will do the trick. Um, I do the floating method where I actually blend the paint on my brush to get it to um, go from dark to light. And these are so beat up, but that's the thing. I'm doing mixed media, so it's a bit rougher. The brush... Um, video I did the other day was more for if you're doing um, if you want everything neat and tidy keep your brushes nice mixed media tends to beat your brushes up more because I'm working on a textured background there's a lot going on on here that can beat your brush up so um, just ha have that in mind but do try to keep your brushes as neat as you can I'm going to just go into a little bit of pink I went into water corner load my brush and then I'm going to pull over my palette paper. And this is a wet, I'm um, sorry, no, I always want to say wet palette. This is a paper palette. And it's just like a waxy surface. And I push the paint into the bristles. And it goes from light, from, I'm sorry, from dark to light to water. And I just want to add a little bit of this into my clouds. I'm just going to hit it here and there, like a reflection, you know. The sun is coming from somewhere. I'm running out. I ran out of paint. And I'll put a little bit of yellow in there too. Um, but it's just another whimsical element that I like to do. Just to add the color all over the place. Um, I could add it into my stepping stones a little bit. Because when I shade them you're not going to see, but like it just brings the pink all throughout the piece. Uh, Alright, so the first thing I'm going to show you, and we're going we're gonna to set this piece, we're going to get the hills, let's see, what am I trying to say? I want to get out um, my black, green, and my Payne's gray. Those are my go-to colors when it comes to the green and the blue. I want to shade those to make them sit down into the into the piece. So I'm going to just put a little Payne's Gray out on my, and that's a tiny bit, because this technique, I only need a tiny bit of paint. I'm going to go to my bigger brush, water, blot on my paper towel, corner load the brush just a little bit, and put it down on the on the paper palette, and work the paint into my brush. Then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get this horizon line on here. And I'm going up the side of the um, roof too. I'm going to continue doing this. And if I was a good editor, I could speed this part up so that you can just see where I do it. But I'm not a good editor and I don't know how to keep some things uh, sped up and some things not sped up. So I got to do it in real time. But basically, I want to put this on all the sky areas to set things into the background like to say there's depth here these things are in front of other things uh, I just made a mess but if it gets on other alright let's go around the clouds so you just put the color up against the cloud and gently pull the paint around the um, shape of the cloud all the bristles are on the surface because you need the water too you don't just want the paint and by the time you're done your kind of uh, your cloud is kind of attached to the background now. It's not just hanging in the middle of nowhere. It also kind of outlines it for you so that you can see the shape better. And this is how I've I learned to shade with decorative painting. 
So that's what I'm bringing to my um, mixed media now. I like this technique and I'm loving the sheer coats of paint because like I said, I'm impatient. So it's a quick way to get your design down there and it's, it's going to all come together at the end. So right away, look, you can see the two clouds that I've shaded and they are now, you know, set into the piece. So I'm going to basically do that all around the trees, around the trees, around the roof, or anywhere on blue, on all the blue. Then I'm going to take the black green and do the same thing on the grass areas. And I want to show you a really cool part that I like to do on my, um, to set my cobblestones into the grass. I switch to a smaller brush just because I don't need a lot and I am a heavy hand. See, look, I already have a ton, a ton of paint on here. So I'm just going to try and keep it. I'm going to grab my um, mop brush too, just in case. But I'm going to start on the left side of the cobblestones on the grass. The paint, actually, I need a little more um, color. The paint is on the grass, not on the stone. So you put it to the edge. Sorry, I'm getting my bound there. And I'm going to just on the edges there but I want to go do the same thing all the way down let's try and zoom in here and all of a sudden the cobblestones will seem like they are in the grass instead of just on top of the grass and I just keep picking up paint from the I can't say sorry all right hold on I'm a little far. I should move my camera a little closer to me. I'm going to just pull this. Sorry, I'm going to pull it with my feet. Alright, because it's closer to me, I'll be able to see it. There we go. Look at that. It just is awesome. So, a little bit of paint goes a long way. Just right up under this each one of these cobblestones on the grass and next thing you know your cobblestones I think Matt and Mai are here yep. come to life hey Mai in my room ta-da let me zoom back out Whoa, shit. oh <laughs> I think Matt almost tripped over my dog all right, so I'm going to go away and finish some, some shading, and I'll come back. All right, be right back. Okay, I wanted to continue with the black-green, but um, everybody's here, so it's gonna, it could get hectic. Um, right along the horizon, like, wait, it's not the horizon lines, but it's these little hill lines. I'm going to do some black-green on top of the hill. So this house is sitting on a little hill so I'm just gonna put some black green there and actually up against oopsie I just went right on the house up against the house and on top of this roof so all around it that was pretty crooked sorry guys it'll actually be fine because when we outline everything you can always take a q-tip you know I love my q-tips if you get it on somewhere you don't want it and do like kind of so up against let's say do the same thing over here let's go down well I probably could do it go all around the tree on the grass though not on the tree the color is going to go down the tree trunk and across this little area and it sets him down into the background right and do the same thing on the other side like this whole area here up against the stuff the stuff okay very technical word so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side of the tree oops this is so wet I gotta blot my brush a little bit I just blot it on the paper towel and take off some of the water but I still have plenty of color and I'm just going around there oops no not up against not up the top whoop I took that off I'm just going to stop because if you go over, you can pull off the water and it's just annoying when that happens. Um, but like right here, I'm running out of paint. 
up against the side and across where that little house is sitting, right? And I'm going to go, I'll do all up the side of that. We have to go up the side of the tree. Well, my hair, my husband and my dog are home now, and they're going to, she's going to come crashing through my door. Uh, so yeah, so that type of stuff, okay? Then, I'm even going to, like I don't love how I did that because it was so, um, I have to go out here. So there's a few, all fix and fudge and things. But then, you also want to highlight the top of the hills. So what should I use? Should I use yellow? Yellow could look bright and good. I think I'm going to use yellow. Let's try it. I'm going to use my smaller brush. I don't want a ton. And I'm just going to go into some yellow. I mean, you could mix a little white with green to make a lighter color green, but let's see what the yellow looks like. So I'm going to do this on the top of the hills. Look at that. Ooh. I mean, you know what? You're not going to see that. That's going to be all dark. But over here, and I could just throw a little here and there. Oh, um, under here. I mean, on. see how it's just the top of the hill? Um... And on this sucker right here, sucker, that's not a sucker. See? And then, I mean, you could just bring it into the, um, the ground here, like uh, here and there. A little bit of yellow. You know what else we could do? Put it on the clouds. Oh, you know what? Let's put a little bit. It's my hubby. Be right back. <laughs> 